Good afternoon. Thank you for joining the National Youth Leadership Council's All About NYLC's Resources webinar. My name is Kalita Bach. It is my great privilege to serve as the CEO of NYLC and also to welcome you all to this free webinar today. We'll be sharing information about the tools and resources we offer that cover the latest research and happenings in service learning, from informative articles to planning tools and even more. There are, we'll also, we will also share ways that you can use them in your work, whether you're just getting started or you're a pro who has authored one or more of the articles that we'll talk about later today, in which case we thank you. The National Youth Leadership Council was founded 28 years ago by Dr. James Kielsmeyer. Our mission is to create a more just, sustainable, and peaceful world with young people, their schools, and their communities through service learning. We work to meet our mission through three core program strategies, developing young leaders, supporting educators, and advancing the field. Over time, the service learning movement has drawn people from all walks of life who are ultimately looking to improve academic and civic outcomes for young people, whether that's teachers who know that students learn best when they can apply textbook lessons to real problems, administrators and district leaders who see increased engagement and academic improvement when their students realize that they have the power to be part of solving problems in their communities, policymakers who want to reform our education system and promote the civic skills needed for an educated democracy, parents who want their children to be active and engaged at home, in school, and in the world, and young people themselves who are leaders that deserve to be heard today, not in some distant future. During this webinar, as you hear from a few members of our talented NYLC staff, I hope you learn new ways to gather and share information and opportunities for how you can connect with our mission and this important movement. I firmly believe that together, we can make a positive change for all young people, schools, and communities. Thank you again for joining us. Hi, I'm Karen Pernu. I'm the Program Strategies Director here at the National Youth Leadership Council, and I'm here with my colleague, Sam Schultz. Hi, everyone. My name is Sam, and I'm the Marketing Associate here at NYLC. Thanks for joining us today. Um, so to get us started, one of our first resources, this is a revised version of the Getting Started in Service Learning booklet. Um, this was published in 2010. Um, there's about 67 pages in it, and it's a great overview of service learning. This is a great introduction to what service learning is. It starts out with an introduction and kind of walks you through the steps. Um, inside, you'll find um, project examples highlighted throughout each chapter. Um, there's research-based elements of how to produce high-quality service learning, as well as step-by-step -step planning tools, including other elements that we, we have, um, like the service learning cycle, the standards, et cetera. Yeah, the idea is it's a, it's a handbook that gives you everything that you need to get started doing service learning. If this is one of the first times that you're doing it, it includes most of the resources you'll need in order to, to get started and to get started in a way that's going to get you the outcomes that you want, the student outcomes, the character outcomes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of helpful diagrams, um, key terms to know in service learning, um, as well as uh, readiness assessment to see once you've reviewed this information if you are now ready to implement this in your classroom or with your youth. Um, who we kind of see this as a resource primarily for educators, service learning coordinators, AmeriCorps working in schools, but anyone really, um, community partners, anyone working with youth or looking to integrate service learning into their practice. Mm -hmm. um, this is a great tool for trainings. Um, you can use this to lead trainings, plan meetings, um, or advance your own practice as well. And this is available um, for purchase on the nylc.org bookstore, and it's about $15. Great. The next resource that we want to talk about is the K-12 Service Learning Standards for Quality Practice. Um, over the past several decades, actually, NYLC has been working with other organizations and practitioners across the country in order to help people figure out what is the best way to do service learning? How mm -hmm. can we get the best outcomes that we want for kids? And for a number of years, we had um, the essential elements of service learning. These were really accepted widely in the field, but they were based on professional wisdom rather than the research that was behind them. In part, in the early days of the field, um, the 
research didn't exist, but as we developed a, a strong body of research supporting service learning, we wanted to know what does the evidence actually show about the elements that are really important in service learning? How can we get the best outcomes for kids? And these K-12 service learning standards are the result of that. Um, we worked with RMC Research in Denver and did a series of literature reviews to really look at what was in the scientific research base. And um, we took those and came up with a set of eight standards. And then we looked at the research and we talked to professionals again to try to get a sense of what makes each of these standards so important. And that's where we came up with the list of indicators that go along with each standard. Um, these standards and indicators have been adopted by many organizations across the United States and mm -hmm. international. State departments of education are using them w as they develop service learning frameworks in their state. Mm -hmm. um, the government of Alberta, Canada has adopted them as their standards for service learning practice in the state. Mm -hmm. And other organizations like the Peace Corps have been using them as well. Um, you know, so in addition to those organizations, parents use these. Um, it's a great tool to, to talk to parents about service learning with and show the different kinds of elements and the reason behind service learning, community members, administration. But really, these are written for practitioners, for K-12 educators to look at the elements of what they're doing in the classroom to make sure that they're having the strongest possible impact on students that they can. Um, we use these in trainings. Many other people who do service learning trainings and coordinate service learning use them. Um, they're great for assessing your practice, really looking at what you're doing and what you should be doing, and for planning meetings around service learning. Our next resource kind of piggybacks off of that whole idea of having the standards and once they were set and created, which took a lot of time and effort to develop, we went um, and took it a step further and created the LIFT, which is a great multimedia tool, which kind of takes it a step further and digs into each standard and makes it a little bit more interactive. What's great about the LIFT as well is that it highlights three schools, elementary, middle school, and high school, and as that we have identified as exemplar models of service learning. These are schools who will integrate service learning in different ways and incorporate each standard throughout. So when you log on, it's just that it's easily accessible at thelift.nylc.org and available for free. Um, you open to this home screen, which gives you an overview of the tool um, and the standards and gives you this great five minute video of um, service learning and what the standards can do to provide. So it, this is a great video to share for someone who's as, as an entry point to service learning. Mm -hmm. So if I want to explore meaningful service, I would just click on the link for meaningful service down here at the bottom of the screen, and we get this. Exactly, and this will give you a definition of the, of the standard, as well as um, what Karen just described in the standard booklet, um, the indicators and also, like I said, the definition. So here you get an overview, a five minute overview video of what the standard is, and you can dig even further into the think about it, talk about it module or the explore meaningful service. So if we click, for example, on think about it, talk about it, you can see that there's even more resources within. So here, this page highlights about five to six one minute video clips from students, teachers, administrators, community partners, um, all over of from the three schools that I had explained before. So this gives you a nice visual example of um, what the standard looks like in practice. And I like using this because these videos come with questions. So if you are working with a group of people and really want to talk about um, meaningful service or any of the other standards in depth, this section asks questions about it and provides discussion questions so that you get a deeper and richer experience of the video, video clips that you're looking at. So when you click on the red X, it brings you back to the, the standard page that you were on before. So we can go again from, we were at the think about it, talk about it previously, and now we can explore more into the meaningful service standard. So in this section, um, this includes several longer five minute video clips and also several PDF resources, um, that it, which includes the research to support why the standard is important in service learning and a description will pop up when you click on that PDF or that video. And um, Yeah, this, this particular resource is called Preparation, so Preparing for Service Learning. 
And um, this is a nice tool that K-12 educators can, or um, other people who work with K-12 kids can use when they're doing service learning to help kids prepare for doing meaningful service by really thinking about what their skills are, what their interests are, and how that relates to service. It, it serves as a good prompt for them to think about what's going to be meaningful for them and what kind of meaningful contributions they can make to their community. Mm -hmm. Again, this tool, it has videos, it has PDF downloads, printable PDF downloads you can just print off and distribute. Um, this we see as, you know, educators can use this in their classrooms to support um, whatever projects they're working on. Parents can show this to their, you know, other parents or their, their kids, um, mm -hmm. partners, administrators. This is really for anyone looking to, looking for concrete examples and also printable resources they can take away. Mm -hmm. And we see this as a premier professional development tool that's available online where um, groups of teachers can look at it together and use it in their professional learning communities. Mm -hmm. I love this resource. Mm -hmm. um, another important piece that we offer is this book called Academic Success Through Service Learning. Um, this is really a key resource in the field for elementary school educators. We often see examples of service learning at the high school and middle school levels, but sometimes people really want to think about what is developmentally appropriate at the elementary school level. And this book is one of those places where they can find a lot of that information. Um, we worked with um, teachers across the country to come up with 20 project examples. So these are meant to um, prompt ideas for service learning, they show those standards-based curriculum connections with each of the 20 projects that's outlined in here. Um, and they explore themes around a variety of things that are really key issues for students today. The environment, arts, intergenerational activities, um, global diversity activities, and civic engagement activities. Some of, in each of those sections, each of those thematic sections, um, the book goes in depth and really gives um, everything you need to replicate that service learning project in your own school. There's also literacy connections, reproducible forms and handouts, letters to parents that you can use. It's chock full of resources that um, teachers and others can find really helpful. Um, mostly this is used by elementary education practitioners, service learning coordinators in elementary schools or parent volunteers in elementary schools who are looking for things their kids could do and other ways their kids can be involved in the community, mm -hmm. after school programs. Um, and it is great for planning meetings and trainings also when you are talking with people about how service learning fits into the elementary school world. I think this is one of the real go-to resources for that. Growing to Greatness was um, NYLC's research effort, um, we have taken the name from a Martin Luther King quote, everybody can be great because everybody can serve. People grow to greatness. And this is the idea behind this, really looking in at the research that supports service learning, that supports service. What do we know about service learning policy across the United States? Um, we have profiles of key service learning organizations, profiles of what service learning has looked like in every state from 2004 to 2010. This has been one of the key resources for the service learning field, the K-12 service learning field. And um, although we are no longer producing these in an annual volume, NYLC continues to do research and continues to gather some of the best research in the field and present it at our conference, um, doing with through evaluation reports and highlighting others' reports in the field. And these will be available soon on our website. Um, the Growing to Greatness, the whole backlog of our library is available and searchable in our online resource center. And um, one of the key features of this is our service learning by the numbers, which we are continuing as well. Looking at the quick snapshot of numbers, what service lo learning looks like across the states. Um, these are some of the articles that appear in there, and each is available on our website in a downloadable form. 
This has been an indispensable resource for service learning coordinators, administrators, community partners, and researchers. It um, really is useful when you're talking to policymakers when mm -hmm. your administrators want to know why should we do service learning? Who are some of the key audiences doing service learning? What do we know about the practice? What does the research show about how effective it is in urban populations with diverse populations? This remains the best resource for finding that information in a research form that's written for practitioners. So it's designed to be accessible to a general audience rather than simply educational researchers. Mm -hmm. Especially if, for example, you're one of few teachers implementing service learning in your school and you know administrators or other teachers are asking you, well, why, why would I want to go out of my way to do that? You really have a research book on your shelf supporting the reasons why you're doing service learning. Absolutely. Smart Youth Solutions to the Achievement Gap. This is one of our most recent publications and has been an effort over the past at least year, if not two years. Um, and this, this initiative mm -hmm. really stemmed from our Youth Advisory Council at the time. Um, they were really challenging us with the question, you know, how are we really engaging youth with this whole national dialogue on the achievement gap? Um, with all the stats and research and data, you know, kind of being driven, where, where, where is youth voice and all that? So this is really our response to that. Um, in this, um, we offer as a training um, these two resources, one of, the, one of which is the student handbook and um, the other is the facilitator guide. Um, mm -hmm. Both are different and they're both offered through trainings currently on a contractual basis. Um, the student handbook is about 52 pages and it walks through how to create a service learning action plan and really gets students to um, effective ways to involve other students in taking action on this issue. Um, there's sample surveys, goal setting, timeline, budgets, letter templates, and appendices of all sorts of research outlining the, the research behind this. The facilitator guide is about 130 pages and really breaks down the achievement gap in this way that we're illustrating on the slide. Um, we take these four major contributing factors to the issue of the achievement gap, being um, individual expectations, home and family circumstances, teachers and school systems and how these factors are interrelated to one another and um, this facilitator guide really kind of breaks it down and how youth can be agents as of change in this issue. Um, and it's chock full of activities that mm -hmm. are really hands-on that let youth experience the achievement gap in new ways and really think about what are those key issues where they can have an influence? Mm -hmm. So in this training, um, you know, we provide both guides, the facilitator guide as well as the student handbook, and both are meant to complement one, one another. Um, and we walk you through that with the training. Um, we see this as um, an opportunity for teams of youth or adults to get involved in this issue. Really, if um, you know, the achievement gap is, is buzzing right now on the national scene, and if you're struggling to find resources or ways to kind of get involved, this is a really great way to learn about the issue. All the, the latest research is kind of readily accessible in these guides and with these trainings particularly. Um, so if you're looking for a way to take action, this is really a great way. Currently, um, this is available through an NYLC training. Um, we have half day and full day trainings, which include three trainers, mm -hmm. as well as um, up to 20 copies of the student handbook and a facilitator guide. Yeah, the other way that um, people are experiencing this training is through our national youth leadership training. Mm -hmm. um, we have a summer camp kickoff, which is an eight day immersion training on the achievement gap. And then we support the young people going back, the teams of young people come, and then they go back to their home communities and work on these projects over the course of the school year. Um, it's a really a tremendous experience. Mm -hmm. And we encourage you to check our website or contact us if you're interested in taking advantage of that. Um, the Generator is our research into practice quarterly publication that we've been doing almost since NYLC's inception. It's taken different forms, and in the current form, 
we really take an in-depth look at um, some of the frameworks for service learning that exist right now. For two years, we took an in-depth look at the service learning standards, the K-12 service learning standards for quality practice, and each issue, each of eight issues really looked at one standard. That whole series is now available. Um, so you can have this extra set of resources that really explores each standard in depth. We're also looking now at the service learning cycle and the nine steps in the service learning cycle and providing resources that really help you understand how to most effectively structure the projects and the activities for each step of the cycle that you're doing. Um, each issue takes um, it has a couple of different elements that people have told us they find really useful. It has a research overview of the issue involved. We include a project example that really looks in depth at the topic for the issue. There is an administrator's corner looking at how superintendents, principals, and other school administrators see service learning and how they're using it effectively in their schools. Um, the most practical piece and the one that is most popular I have to admit is the um, pull out teacher tool that's in the center of each of these. These um, handy tools are meant to be a one page resource to double sided that you can use to really find a practical way of implementing something in your classroom today. Hmm. So we talk about ways of incorporating youth voice, how you can document your service, just some real practical tools that go along with that. Mm -hmm. This is a popular resource among service learning coordinators, educators, administrators, community partners, um, and they fly off our exhibit booth when we bring them to conferences. They're great yeah. for trainings and the coffee table. Yeah, absolutely. This is a great kind of publication that um, it includes a, a training tool that you can really take away, plan projects, plan resources, and also includes great stories from the field as well. Tough Minds, Tender Hearts is a recent publication that was launched at our at the 22nd Annual National Service Learning Conference last April in um, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and this is really, it's building Martin Luther King Jr.'s beloved community through service learning. And this is a reflection journal for educators, for youth, for, for anyone really. Um, it's about 56 pages and it was written by Vincent Kavalowski and Jane Hammett Kavalowski was really a collaborative effort from its inception. Um, what's great about this is that it's a real, it's got a great balance between um, stories, quotes, and text about Martin Luther King's life, and also really solid guiding reflection questions that relate to the text, but also bring the text to the reader's life as well. Um, there's about eight chapters um, emphasizing different parts of uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s life. Um, and readers really come to an understanding of the important people in his life, the periods that led to mem some memorable speeches, and again, um, focus on reflection questions that bring it um, to a personal level as well. Uh, we often use this um, in trainings with teachers to inspire ef um, effective re reflections, and um, because the journal doesn't, it doesn't just summarize what the, the stories are saying or what the, what the message is, but it's really... Um, meant to compare his teachings and leadership style with your own um, or with your youth or whoever you're talking about. Um, this could be great uh, in a classroom. Uh, we offer classroom packs um, or we also sell them individually. They're about $8 a piece, but if you buy a classroom pack of 20, it's $72, which is, um, I believe it's about 50% savings if you buy it in bulk. Um, so this would be great um, if you're doing a lesson on social justice or um, around January, his birthday um, is, would be a timely t um, time to take <laughs> reflection. <laughs> Absolutely. The Generator School Network is one of NYLC's premier signature programs that we offer. This is a network of schools and teachers and other practitioners who are doing service learning across the United States. 
um, one of the features of the GSM is a free online community where people can come together to learn, plan, and connect around service learning. It is a great resource for finding out who's doing what across the country. We have educators from almost every state and probably half a dozen or a dozen c other countries who are posting about the projects that they're doing and really connecting with each other and talking about their work. Um, this is um, just a terrific resource in that way. We've broken the online community into three parts, learn, plan, and connect. Under the learn section, you're, you can go and explore different topics, timely topics and trends in service learning. How do you do rigorous self-assessment of your service learning project? How can we make sure that our service learning is standards-based? Those kinds of things. It's a great place for resources and discussion, and um, we really recommend that you take a look at that. The plan section is really the heart of this, though. It's where teachers come together and actually plan their service learning projects. Many teachers um, have formed groups and post all the service learning projects that they do so they can share and get feedback from other teachers. They look there for ideas for what other people are doing across the country. And um, they really use it as a thinking out loud space for their service learning this is what I'm thinking of doing, but I don't know how to do this. Where can I get some help? Do you have an idea for a particular partner on this? It's a fabulous resource for that. Um, and the other piece that most of you on this webinar probably know is that the GSM offers free online webinars. Probably two or three times a month um, you'll find something that will help you enhance your service learning practice whether it's looking at NLC service learning resources, whether it is exploring a particular standard or a particular topic, like um, looking at the achievement gap and how young people can be solutions for that. This is one of the main ways that NYLC provides free professional development to people who ask for it. And if there are certain kinds of topics that you're looking for, you can connect with NYLC on the Generator School Network online site, and we can help you find the kind of resources that you want. Mm -hmm. um, it's used widely by service learning educators, K-12 teachers, service learning coordinators. There are groups that are formed, cohorts that are formed within the GSM, um, where they can share with their immediate colleagues, like the AmeriCorps Promise Fellows have a group on there. Guilford County Schools in North Carolina shares all of their service learning lesson plans with each other from the GSM, and thus they share them with you because they're there and they're open to the public. Um, other teachers and community partners look there to see what's going on in schools and how they can help when their community partners who um, are looking for school partners have come to the GSM to see what's going on and find ways that they can work with schools and students that they might not have thought about. If you're looking for ideas, planning service learning, assessing a practice, looking for some professional development, the Generator School Network is really the place to come. Social media, this is, NYLC is very active on social media and this is a great way for us to kind of disseminate um, news, stories, resources, um, many of which link back to our website where you can learn more, find more, read more connect with other practitioners, connect with youth, connect with the whole service learning community. You know, we really use these mediums to kind of get our message out there, but also interact with um, anyone interested in taking advantage. I like finding out about what other students have done and mm -hmm. what's going on. And I think that um, the Facebook and some of our project sites have done a really good job of that. Absolutely. Our Youth Advisory Council has really taken the lead on this as well. You know, they're implementing their own service learning plans uh, throughout the year and they love to give updates out to us and you know the world through these mediums. Mm -hmm. um, this is a, an example of our um, NYLC 
National Youth Leadership Council Facebook page and um, Twitter feed as well. Um, so be sure to like us and follow us if you're interested in receiving kind of timely updates, up-to-the-minute updates. Mm -hmm. And getting information on the conference mm -hmm. and who the absolutely. speakers are and what's happening there. Are there programs as well? Um, this resource is absolutely for everyone. Um, and we do post daily. And um, we love it when people kind of interact with us through that as well, liking and commenting and retweeting some of our different things. Fabulous. Um, our website, um, this is really our central hub of where um, most, if not all, of our resources are posted between nylc.org and uh, the, G the Generator School Network. Um, these are, this is really um, where all of our news, we post events, upcoming events, trainings, um, all information related to the conference and our other programs as well. Um, we have a resource library, and also we have a bookstore. And the bookstore is where you should all be familiar with because that's how you signed up for this webinar today. Um, but in addition to our webinars that we offer and professional development opportunities, this is where um, you can go to purchase um, books, um, like we mentioned before. Mm -hmm. And don't forget that you can also subscribe to our newsletter mm -hmm. and other kinds of pieces that we put out regularly. Mm -hmm. Yep, if you're interested in receiving news um, related to the conference, related to our programs, and also from the field, we do... Um, send out news related to policy and advocacy um, and other things. And you can kind of self-select what you want to keep informed about. Um, the nylc.org website is, is great for really anyone, any educators, service learning coordinators, youth administrators, or anyone really practicing service learning. There's a lot of great resources. Or mm -hmm. anyone really interested in um, education, um, you know, engaged education, anything that really kind of goes on in that field, we kind of keep a pulse on that as well and keep updates related to our events and news as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you can feel free to contact, uh, contact us with any questions about these resources or um, inquiries. We invite you to email us at nylcweb at nylc.org. Um, and again, visit our website. It's really great. It's essential. Anything we kind of create or develop, or um, want to get the word about, it's going to be on our website. So we really encourage you to check that out. And thank you all for joining us today. Thank you so much for your participation. And uh, we look forward to engaging with you further online and um, through email. Thanks. <laughs>